Many students think that a research proposal is just a form you have to fill. But it's actually your first chance to show why your idea is important. It tells you have a good topic, you've done your work and you know what to do next. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you how to write one step by step. Also, I'll be using paper pal throughout the process to make it a lot more smoother and faster. In this video, we'll cover a few important things. What a research proposal actually is, what you need to have before writing one, the key parts that every proposal must include and the basic structure to follow. By the end, you'll know how to write a clear and convincing proposal without getting lost in much theory. Before we move to the steps, let's first understand what a research proposal actually is. A research proposal is simply a plan for your study. It explains what you want to research, why your idea is important and how you want to do it. You don't have to write the full research here just the outline and the approach you're going to take. Think of it as a roadmap that helps your teacher or guide see the direction before you start. Now, why is this important? Because a good research proposal helps you get funding, approval, and even guidance on how to make your study better. If your proposal is weak, your research might get delayed or rejected before it even starts. A simple way to understand a proposal is to think about these three questions. What do you want to study? This is your topic or problem. Why does it matter? This is the purpose or significance. How will you do it? This is your method or plan. For example, let's say you want to study how urban gardening helps air quality in cities. Then your proposal would say, I want to study the impact of balcony or rooftop gardening in urban air pollution. This is important because city air pollution is a major concern. I will monitor air quality in 50 urban homes with and without rooftop gardening. That's it. Simple, clear and to the point. That's the heart of a proposal. Alright, now that we fully understand what a research proposal is, our next question is how to start writing one. Step 1. Choosing the right topic. Choose something you find interesting, but also make sure it's practical, not too broad and not too narrow. A good way to start is by reading recent articles or papers in your field. Look at what's already been done and find out the questions that are still left to answer. And here's something that can save you a lot of time. PaperPal has a brainstorm tool that helps you get focused topic ideas in seconds. Just enter your broad area of interest and it gives you a list of research-worthy suggestions. If you want the full detailed guide on how to choose the right research topic, we've already made a separate video on that. You'll find the link for that in description. Now that you've picked your topic, what's next? Before you start writing, it really helps to understand what a research proposal actually looks like. Think of it as a quick map, so you're not lost halfway. Most proposals have these main parts. Title. Keep it short and clear. It should tell exactly what your study is about. Abstract. A tiny summary, usually 150 to 350 words, that tells the purpose, methods, and what you expect to find. Introduction. Explains the background. Why is this topic worth studying? Literature review plus research gap. What's already been done and what's missing that your research will cover. Objective. Research questions and hypothesis. What are you trying to achieve? What questions will you answer? Do you have a hypothesis to test? Methodology. How you'll do your research. Data, tools, participants, methods. Just a quick plan. Ethical considerations. Only needed if you're working with people or sensitive info. Like how you'll keep data private. Timeline and budget. When will each part happen and how much it will cost? Significance or conclusion. Why does this study matter and what's the impact? References. All the sources you've used. Most proposals are around 2000 to 3000 words. But always make sure to check what a university or funding agency asks for. Here's a quick way to make this step easier. Open PaperPal, go to Templates and select Research Proposal. It will ask you for a short prompt. Just explain your topic in one or two lines and it will instantly create a basic outline for you. From there, you can start adding details to each section. Title, Abstract, Introduction, Literature Review plus Research Gap, Objectives, Research Questions and Hypothesis, Methodology, Ethical Considerations, Timeline and Budget, Significance or Conclusion, References. Now that your outline is ready, let's start filling it in section by section. First up is your title. This is the very first thing readers see. So it should clearly reflect what your research is about. Keep it short, specific and to the point. For example, impact of urban gardening on city sustainability. Notice how this exactly tells you what the study is about without being too vague or too broad. Once you've nailed the title, the next thing to work on is your abstract. Think of it as a quick summary of your whole proposal. It should briefly explain what your study is about, why it's important, 
how you're going to do it and what are you expecting to find. Keep it short, around 150 to 250 words and very clear because this is very often the first things reviewer read to decide if they even want to continue. After the abstract, we move to the introduction. This is where you set the stage for your reader, explain why your topic matters and what problem you're going to solve. Keep it clear and to the point. After this, the next step is the literature review. This is where you look at what other researchers have already studied about your topic. It's like saying, here's what we already know and here's what is still missing. One important part of this is finding the research gap, the area that hasn't been studied enough. For example, there might be a lot of research on urban farming for food production, but very little on how community-based urban gardens improve social cohesion and local air quality. The missing part is your gap. Doing this manually can take a lot of time, searching for papers, reading them and actually sorting out which ones actually matter. This is where PaperPal can save you hours. With the Research Insight feature, you can type your topic, for example, effects of urban gardening on city sustainability, and it will find the most useful studies for you. You can read the key points, pick what's relevant, and even add citations directly while you write. And if you want to learn how to write a proper literature review, we've already made a video on that too. You'll find the link for that too in description. Once you've reviewed the literature and found the literature gap, the next step is to clearly specify your objective. This part answers the question, what exactly do you want to find through your research? Your objective should be clear and focused. For example, if your topic is urban gardening and city sustainability, your objectives could be to analyze how urban gardening impacts air quality in densely populated areas, to evaluate the role of community gardens in improving food security in urban households. Good objectives are simple, specific and directly linked to your research gap. They help guide the entire study from your methods to final analysis. Now, some proposals also include a hypothesis. A hypothesis is just a prediction. What you expect the result is going to be based on the information you already have. For example, cities with more urban gardening initiatives show better air quality and higher local food production than cities without such programs. Having a hypothesis helps you give a direction to your research. It's like saying, here's what I expect to happen. Now let's talk about the methodology section. This is one of the most important parts of your proposal because it explains how you're going to do your study and if your idea is even practical and logical. Theoretical framework. Start by explaining the theory or framework your study is based on. This sets the foundation for your research. Methods. Explain how you'll answer the research questions. Will you do experiments, case studies, simulations or surveys? For example, if you're testing how urban gardening affects city sustainability, you might collect data from city gardening projects, survey participants and analyze changes in pollution levels and food supply chain. Data collection. Be clear about how you'll collect the data. For experiments, describe the materials, tools and steps you'll follow. For surveys, explain who your participants are, how you'll select them and what information you will gather. Data analysis. Explain how you'll analyze your data. You might use statistical tools or softwares to detect patterns. Ethical considerations. If your study includes people, animals, or sensitive information, include ethical considerations like consent forms or approvals. This section shows the organization that your study is feasible, well thought of, and organized. After the main sections, there are some smaller sections like scope, timeline, and budget. The scope explains what your study will cover and what it won't keeping the study focused. For example, if your research is about urban gardening's effect on sustainability, your scope could focus on large metropolitan areas, not suburban or rural region. The timeline shows how much each section of your study will take, like one to two months for literature review, three to four months for data collection, and one month for data analysis. A clear timeline shows your study is realistic and feasible. The budget estimates the total cost, including travel, materials, tools, and other things. Next is the significance of your study. Here, you explain why your study matters and how it can solve problems or guide further studies. For example, for the topic urban gardening, you can show how your findings might help city planners create more green spaces, improve air quality and enhance food security. Finally, the references section. List all the sources you used in the correct citation style. Make sure every source you used in your proposal is mentioned here. This not only gives credit to the original authors, but also makes your proposal look more credible and trustworthy. Now that you've drafted all the sections of your research proposal, PaperPal can help you refine each section and make it professional. If you ever feel stuck or don't know how to continue a section, just use the right section tools like expand this or continue writing. These tools help generate more ideas, add detail or continue your text smoothly without losing the flow of your proposal. Next, the rewrite feature is great if you want to paraphrase sentences, 
simplify complex text or make your language more academic click on any sentence and instantly see improved versions which you can apply with a single click then you can use the edit feature to check your grammar spelling and sentence flow it scans your proposal and gives you suggestions so your writing is clear and polished another useful tool is cite select any text and quickly add references from your library or search online this ensures all your statements are backed by proper sources saving you time paperpal also comes with a plagiarism checker and ai review tool firstly the plagiarism checker gives you a plagiarism score and shows the exact sources where your text overlaps so you can fix them quickly and make your work original then the ai review provides suggestions and feedback on your proposal to make it better it can help improve clarity strengthen arguments enhance academic tone and ensure your writing flows smoothly together these tools make your research proposal more credible and professional and that's it your research proposal is ready for submission paperpal as a tool can be of great help when it comes to academic writing that's why if you want to unlock the full potential it has to offer make sure you buy the prime version also if you found this video useful give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more such videos till then good luck with your research proposal and i'll catch you in the next one